it's Matt and welcome back to Wiser Wednesday, the series where I make all of you a little bit wiser about some of the best sci-fi and fantasy authors that I think people should be picking up. So I've been waffling back and forth on whether to pick Joe Abercrombie or N.K. Jemisin first, but I actually decided to pull a complete 180 and go a little bit further afield to pick an author that I know people do love, but that it seems a lot of broader fantasy readers don't really know about. So, so today we are talking about Will White. But before we get started, I would really appreciate it if you guys went down below, smash that like button, apologize to it, and then go to its neighbor, be a little gentler, and hit that notification bell. Now without further ado, let's get started. Will White is an author that I actually almost never picked up. This sounds a little bit shady, but I kept being recommended unsold on Audible, and the cover didn't really grip me, and I'm generally of the opinion that if a book is less than 500 pages, what's the point? Audible kept on pushing it though, and eventually I decided to go ahead and check out the reviews for it, and here's the shady part. A lot of the reviews said something along the lines of, I know it sounds really stupid, but just pick it up, trust me. And so I, for once, decided to put my faith in other people and decided to pick up Unsold. And I am so, so, so glad that I did. So Unsold is initially one thing, but as the story progresses, the scope just gets bigger and bigger and bigger to the point where the story morphs into a completely different tale. The Cradle series follows a character named Linden, who lives in a small area called the Sacred Valley. In the Sacred Valley, everyone there is able to use their uh, madra, the life force that flows through everyone, in order to use four different varieties of magic. Linden has just reached his age of testing, and as he goes through the test, he finds out that his magic, his madra, is so, so incredibly weak that he is what's called an unsold which is so rare that it's basically unheard of. And being unsold basically makes Linden a second-class citizen. After a really grave event and a strange visit from this celestial angelic figure, Linden learns that in about 30 years' time, his entire village is going to be destroyed by something called a Dread Beast. Armed with conviction and immense determination, Linden sets off on a very long journey to one day become such a powerful sacred artist that he can save his village. And that's only one of Will White's series. Dustin actually reviewed Cradle not too long ago, so I will link his video up here in the card. The first reason to consider picking up Will White is because of his incredible magic systems. Cradle is, at its heart, a cultivation story, which is a genre I historically despise. I can't stand it. But with Will White's magic systems, it just really serves to breathe life into an unbelievably tired and just tropey, tropey genre. The magic system is rooted in Madra, which is kind of like, like chakra, I suppose, or mana. And sacred artists cycle this mantra throughout their bodies in order to become more efficient, to gain a larger pool of mantra to use, to cultivate, cultivate different types, and basically progress along their path of sacred arts. And along with that, they're able to strengthen their bodies and their spiritual pressure to become basically like impenetrable and immortal. These sacred artists then pursue different classes and different techniques and styles on their path to go all the way from copper rank up to, you know, like gold, true gold, underlord, sage, herald, perhaps even monarch before potentially ascending, and quite literally ascending, by the way. And that's just one of his series. If you jump over to his Elder Empire series, Will White has created a completely different magic system that has to do with people called the readers. Readers are able to touch an object and basically they can understand its history, its identity, its purpose, who's touched it, their state of mind, a whole bunch of different attributes about the object. 
And once they understand the object well enough, they're able to invest the object with their intent. This intent basically makes the tool, the weapon, whatever it is, the armor, it makes the object immensely powerful and better at its job than it otherwise could be. And that intent can actually kind of awaken the object in a sense. And so then there are also people called soulbound. Soulbound are able to find one of these invested items. And if the kind of intent matches up and it seems like a good fit, they're able to basically form a pact with this item to bind their soul to it. And then they can draw on its power to devastating effect. So he has a lot of cool ideas and I just really, really like what he does with his magic. And obviously cultivation is like, it's its own genre, it's its own thing. And so the magic system isn't wholly original, but I do really, really enjoy what he does with it. The second reason that I think you guys should pick up Will White is because of his awesome world building. Each of his different series takes place in a different world. But as we learn more and more about these worlds, and there are many, many of them, we actually see that this whole universe is connected by something called the Way. All of these worlds are shepherded by the Abidon slash the Quark of Seven, and they're there to ensure that all of these iterations, as they're called, uh, maintain order. These Abidon are massively powerful on like an entirely different scale. It's actually to the point where their mere foot soldiers are on par with the monarchs who are the very highest echelon of sacred artists in Linden's world. So the entire like scale of their power is just so far above that it's completely wild. But these Abidon, they're waging an endless war against kind of the forces of chaos. Like I said, they're responsible for maintaining order in these different worlds, but they will also have to quarantine worlds or actually sometimes even reset an iteration if it is too far gone. I wouldn't really consider that a spoiler since we do get a lot of information very early on in Unsold. Um, but like I said, as you go along the story, there is so, so, so much more that you learn and it is top notch. It's really great. And yeah, yet another reason to pick up a Will's books is just because he has so goddamn many of them. Cradle is his most well-known series and it's currently sitting at nine entries, but don't be intimidated by that because they're very, very short and you can knock them out really quick. I binged, I think, like six or seven of them in, I don't know, like two, three days. But in addition to Cradle, he also has his debut trilogy, the Traveler's Gate trilogy. And then he has his Elder Empire series, which I really, really enjoy. And that's made up of two trilogies, which these two trilogies take place concurrently with a lot of the same characters. But the Shara trilogy is following an assassin named Shara, and the uh, Calder trilogy is following a kind of piratey navigator character called Calder, and we're following these two characters who are on opposite sides of a vast impending conflict. Since the immortal emperor who has ruled for the last 2,000 plus years has recently died and all of these guilds are on, they have their own plans about what should happen next. And so there's this massive conflict brewing. And so in that trilogy, in both of those trilogies, we are seeing the same conflict, but we're getting Shara's POV as she tries to ensure that there is no new emperor. And then we get Calder's POV as he tries to become the new emperor. And all of these series take place in different worlds, like I said, but they are all connected, much like the Cosmere. And so if you're a fan of Brandon Sanderson, I can definitely see you enjoying Will White's work as well. Will White also excels in creating really, really lovable characters and incredible friendships. And I'm so, so glad that I picked up his books because if I hadn't, I wouldn't have been introduced to these characters that I honestly love so much now. 
Elder Empire and Cradle both have such incredible cast of characters, and I'm just always really, really happy to step back into those worlds and get reacquainted with them. I feel like I've been visiting them after a long time, and I just like seeing these characters again, having adventures together, being friends, fighting enemies, all of it. In Cradle, I'm a really, really big fan of Aethan Aurelius. He is this eccentric, enigmatic, and kind of egotistical um, sacred artist who is just a really, really great friend to Lyndon. He's just like very much in Lyndon's corner and he has kind of taken responsibility on himself to train Lyndon and help him reach his goals since Lyndon is an unsold and is starting at such a massive disadvantage. Yaren and Mercy, of course, are really, really great friends to Lyndon as well, but it's Orthos and Dross who I really, really adore. Dross is this kind of magical construct with mind-enhancing abilities who is bound to Lyndon, and Orthos is the sacred beast. He's kind of this like geriatric, old, true gold turtle who's training Lyndon in the path of the Black Flame. In terms of prose, there's honestly not very much to write home about. The writing style is just very utilitarian in getting the job done and telling the story. The style is super, super easy to read and you can just fly through it and it can be very punchy and it definitely made me laugh. The overall style of Will White's book skews a little bit young, which isn't normally what I go for, but I feel like all of his books act just as like this fun, fluffy little palate cleanser that I can always use between reading something really heavy like, you know, The Darkness That Comes Before or The Monster Brew Cormoran, stuff like that. These series, they're not YA, they're not middle grade, but I also wouldn't really call them, I guess, adult, at least not in comparison to what I normally go for. You know, I normally go for more of like a grimdark vibe in my books. So sure, they're adult. But overall, I would just say that they kind of defy age. I feel like anyone of any age could really pick up any of his books and find joy in them. I could definitely see some I could definitely see some people getting annoyed with some of the humor from a character like Dross specifically, but I think you just kind of need to know what to expect going into his books. So if you go into it looking for Malazan, you're obviously going to be disappointed, but not every book has to be Malazan, and that's not at all what Will White is going for with his writing. Like, he's just not even trying to get anywhere close to Malazan. And so they're just very, very different stories. And even if you are more of a Malazan reader like myself, I still think that you should pick up Will White's books because like I said, they're just really, really fun. They're fast and there's really no downside. I really do think that if you're a fan of Sandy Brandy, you will find a lot of parallels between his writing style and Will White's. And so, yeah, if you like Sanderson, I think that you would definitely like Wait as well. I could go on and on about this series all day, but I just don't want this video to be too long. All in all, Will Wait is an incredible author who creates really fast-paced, plot-driven stories with incredible characters, great friendships, and a whole lot of fun. If you've been in a reading slump or a bit of a rut, I think that picking up uh, probably Cradle, but also Elder Empire, would be the perfect thing to drag you out of that rut. They're just so easy to fly through and so much fun, and even if for whatever reason you end up not liking the book, you still got a huge change of pace from whatever you were reading or trying to read before in your slump, and this still might be the thing to just knock you out of it. Oh, also, I cannot recommend the audiobooks enough. I'm rarely so in love with a narrator that I like feel 100% that audiobook is the correct, the correct, the only proper format to consume a story. But Travis Baldry, the narrator of Will White's books, he does such an incredible job. Travis, along with narrators like Moira Quirk and my one true favorite, Angel Masters, I love her. They are the type of voice actors who just do such an incredible job that their storytelling and narration style actually elevates an already fantastic story up to an even higher tier, to the very highest. 
And so if you're a fan of audiobooks, I definitely think that this is the way to go. You obviously could read it, but I think that Travis does an incredible job narrating and it just elevates the story. It just does. I think that all, and this time I mean all of you, should try picking this up. Please, for me, just try picking it up. Unsold is a super short book that you can totally fly through and worst case scenario, all you've done is wasted like an afternoon, maybe like three, four hours. That's really all. Best case scenario, you find a new favorite author while having an incredibly fun journey. And this dude has like 18 books that you can pick up. So there's a lot for you to get through and they're all top notch. Try Will White out for yourselves and let me know what you think. Definitely tell me down below if you've already read him and which of his books are your favorite. And let me know if I've actually convinced you to pick him up because that would make me really, really happy. But yeah, that's all that I have for you guys today. If you've made it to the end of the video, include a fire emoji down below in your comments since Lyndon uses the Path of the Black Flame. And that way I'll know you've made it all the way to the end and you are a true fan. Anyway, that's all. Have a good one, guys. Ciao.